If Native Americans originally descended from a cave in Yunnan, China, does that mean that the first Americans were Chinese? Let's talk about it. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. What's the scientific breakthrough this week? Current Biology Magazine released a scientific study that links the DNA of modern day Native Americans to a uh, group of people who used to live in the caves of Yunnan, China. The Red Deer Caves. Here is a photo depiction of what they look like. Huh? All right, so what is new about this information uh, that is on top of the fact that, you know, uh, Native Americans crossed the Bering Strait? Well, basically, it just says that there's a third group of people, not just Siberians, not just Central Asians, but people from essentially modern-day Southeast Asia, because, you know, the Red Deer Caves, it borders Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam. They're the ones that became Native Americans. Man, let's talk about this, David. I think there's a lot of uh, identity questions that come into play, but also it's just kind of like funny information. So let's talk about this right now. If you guys are interested by this, please hit that like button and turn on your notification bells. David, uh, what are like the main reactions that people had on the internet, like the different groups? Okay, we had to go first to the Native American subreddit. Right. Basically, they were like kind of rolling their eyes like, oh, great. They're just another thing to sort of like take us away from who we are because, you know, when the white man came and like killed us all or took our land, they were kind of like saying, oh, well, you guys never really belonged here anyway. Right. And then uh, now people are like joking about like, oh, what are they going to like call us Chinese now? Right. But, or, which or is the guess, not what the Chinese are going to claim us. I don't want to be Chinese. I'm Native American. And by the way, I don't think this study invalidates their identity. I totally think they should feel free and they rightfully should identify as Native American. Uh, what are like some European, like British responses? Some people are like, you know, uh, I think this is like quite, you know, normal knowledge to me. I think we've known this for like a hundred years. If you look at a Chinese and you look at a Native American, they look quite similar. And I think it's pretty funny because British people, they're more familiar with like Europeans migrating to different places than even Americans are. Yeah. I because think Americans are always like centraled around like, oh, America's like the center of the world. But then British are like, well, you know, you guys came from us. Don't forget. <laughs> Yeah, but then white Americans, and obviously I'm sure there's a range of responses, but one was like, hey man, I don't give a damn. They could have came straight from Beijing 10 years ago. We came over here, we won, this is our land. <laughs> Meanies, man. <laughs> uh, what about like kind of maybe Chinese people or maybe particularly people from Yunnan? They might be feeling like kind of like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, hey, we got roots to the Native Americans to North America, what's up? Yeah, I mean, I think that Chinese people probably in the scientific community are just glad they made a big discovery. But people in Yunnan, like you said, they're really excited to see this link. And I can see why, because Andrew, a lot of the people who live in the mountains of Yunnan right now that are sort of these like tribal mountain people, they still have native customs and a lot of things that visually are similar to the Native Americans. Yeah, I mean, especially uh, if you count like Taiwan and then like uh, you're talking about indigenous cultures from around the world, especially when it comes to kind of like people who are linked to Asia. Asia, a lot of the culture is still kind of similar. Yeah. At least the old traditional like clothing that they wear. And it's really weird. It goes along like latitude. So for example, if you look at ancient Siberians and then you look at Alaskans, it's really similar. And then you go one notch level lower and maybe like First Nations and Central Asians. You know what I mean? There's more of a linkage. And then you mm -hmm. kind of just go all the way down because obviously if the migration pattern went all the way down through Mexico, all the way down into Peru, into South America, that's like all one like link of like one or three groups of people. Right. So I mean, I guess, you know, should this affect how people feel? Because we're talking about 14,000 years ago, human migration, generations upon generations. People probably didn't know why they were migrating or I don't know if they knew where they were going because they went through Siberia, which was super cold. And then they could have just stopped and set up shop in California, which would have been great too. But they kept going <laughs> right, all the nobody, way Everybody just didn't want to stop in Santa Barbara or San Diego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, what does... Does this stuff matter or who does it matter to? Okay, um, in a modern day geopolitical sense, it doesn't matter because most people in America don't even study history. They look at life between like 50 to 100 years max. Right. So as far as like America goes, it doesn't matter. And not only that, like we said, unfortunately, you know, the Native Americans, I guess like they were on the losing end of the battle with the Europeans for America by a long shot. So I guess even if they did descend, like we said, you know, back to that, like that white guys, I, I don't care if they came from Indonesia, Borneo, y'all don't know nothing. We came and we won, we won the game. Damn. <laughs> that's messed up, right? Damn. But it, that's how like sort of some people see it. And um, I would say this, for me, my major takeaways are a couple things. 
one, it made me consider the ancient link between sort of like your, you know, ancient Austronesian costumes, Zhuang, Dai people, and Native Americans. Some of the totem poles look the same. Really like striking. Okay. It is interesting. Number two, it made me think about the link between Asians and Latinos, not only in an ancient sense, like I just said, but also a modern sense. Because even though Latinos nowadays are probably, a lot of them are, I guess, heavily mixed with like Spanish blood from Spain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially the indigenous ones, I'm like, oh man, we all like kind of came, went through the same situations, political identities developed in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So there's a lot of modern day shared history as well. And then it kind of made me think about like the collaborations that we have between Native Americans and Asians. like Oh, the, you mean like the modern day ones? Yeah, the modern day one. For example, the movie Wind Talkers about the Navajo Indians helping the um, Americans fight against the Japanese, but there's a lot of really good scenes in there. One of them, you know, some of the white soldiers, they don't trust the Navajo people because they're like, they just look like nips to me. They look like Japanese to me. And then remember the Navajo guys like, I do look just like them. Yeah. And well, because they do, they do look Asian. Yeah, yeah the movie. And then uh, obviously that was directed by John Woo, who's Chinese. Um, Ooh, Andrew, Disney Pocahontas looks like a Filipino ABG. Yeah, I mean, the way they drew her, for sure. I mean, I'm not saying Disney is always the most accurate, but Pocahontas looked very Asian. Her eyes were kind of like... Yeah, you know, I, yeah I heard that there was uh, some debate in Disney of whether which tribe they should make her look like because different Native American tribes look more or less Asian. Obviously, the more further sound south you go, maybe the less. Well, what is the best current collaboration right now? Oh, for sure, the casino. Yeah, <laughs> because the government sort of like, I guess, I don't know if they really do, but they like, kind of feel bad about taking the indigenous people's land. So they give them the casinos. But then the main people who pump money into the casinos and work at the casinos are actually Asians. Yeah, man. And specifically, we, probably Viets or Chinese Viets. Dude, we didn't grow Chinese. up too far from the spot called the Muckleshoe Reservation. And in the reservation, one, you can buy firecrackers and you can go to the casinos. Andrew, if Chinese Viets are the main people at the casinos, and Yunnan, China is sort of in this Chinese Viet zone where it's like kind of like tough to say it's 50-50. Oh, you know what I'm saying, man? Vietnamese were the first Americans. Yo! <laughs> I mean, that's a new theory. Hey, hey, that's a new theory right there. I will right say there. this, Andrew. If we put some fur around your head, you could look like a little Inuit boy, specifically from like Alaska. And yo, and some of our Southeast Asian friends, Andrew, if you put like a feather headdress around Richie's head, he could look like a Cherokee. Yeah. Now, for me... Uh, jokes aside for a second, uh, for that, me, that was a, all due respect. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Hey, these are some funny theories, by the way, uh, with, uh, taking that aside though, I think that ultimately if something from like 14, 10,000 years ago, uh, even affects your identity today, then ultimately how far are you going to take it back? Because if we take it back a hundred thousand years ago, we're all from East Africa. So I'm saying like, of course. We're all African. If you want to go back that far. So how far do you want to go back? 50 years, 500 years, 5,000 years. You name it, it's up to you. Obviously, I think this type of information affects different people differently. I think a lot of people won't care because, and I think that's generally the right answer too. Um, but also- Most people don't even care what happened 150 years ago, let alone yeah. 15,000 years ago, let alone 150,000 yeah, years 150 ago. 150 years ago, if you have a picture of it, I don't know, it matters a little Yo, bit Yo man, more. your ancestor was a Neanderthal. My answer was a Denovin. The Denovins and the Neanderthals, they had beef. Or did, were they homies? Yeah. But uh, by the way, I, I don't think anybody out there actually thinks Native Americans are Chinese, obviously, because guys, but there, there was a funny joke when they were like, oh, so what, is China go, gonna go claim America as its ancestral land? <laughs> that, that was a funny thought. Um, I think true. it does bring up some interesting questions because I remember there was uh, Sherman Alexi, who was a really famous Native American poet from Seattle. Seattle is actually a Native American term named after Chief Seattle guys. Not every part of America had as of a uh, contentious relationship with the Native Americans as like other places. Other places, I think they just wanted to like eliminate them. And other places, they're like mm. trying to find a peace. You know, that's like more how Seattle is. Um, so I just feel like it's interesting because it does bring up some deeper issues of identity because if a white person who's Anglo looks at a Native American who's been here for 15,000 years and goes, hey, go back to where you came from. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Because maybe they think they're Asian or they think they're uh, Mexican Yeah. in 2022. That would be like insane, right? Because they've been here. Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys let us know in the comments down below what you think um, about all this. Is this information relevant? Is it not? Uh, what would you do with it? Oh, one last collaboration. Now, this is maybe not as much Native Americans, but more indigenous Central Americans and Asians is uh, restaurants. 
Yo, they be working together in the restaurants. Oh, that's yeah, a good point. Yeah, yeah. They make oh. a lot of good food between those two collaborating probably, together. Probably not the tallest groups of people either. No, maybe no, not, not the, the tallest, tallest groups, yeah. I mean, what was the thing that motivated them, man? I want to know what motivated them to make this crazy, like, bell curve arc. Well, first of all, no single person actually saw that travel because they all died along the way. But something must have driven them because at any point... No, I was saying, Andrew, those ancient mammoths and buffaloes must have been delicious. Hey, man. Hey, I, you know, for me, I always knew that growing up in a white-black binary America, you know, especially back in the, the 90s, I always picked... The third option which was native american like when we're playing with cowboys and indians i'm not trying to be stereotypical i would always pick the indians because they look like me most of the white kids would pick the cowboys because they were like blonde but i did have one friend called jordan i'll just call him jordan i don't want to say his last name but he used to um always be on with me on mm -hmm. team indians and he ended up marrying an ethnic girl wow so it kind of goes to show jordan you, he was down since kindergarten you were down um yeah, man. I mean, I think that I'm looking forward to more collaborations between uh, indigenous Americans of all types and Asians coming up. I mean, I think there's a lot. I think culturally, we also do like relate in the sense like, you know, a very family base and stuff like that. So hey, shout out to Smoke Signals. And I always remember this. I'll end on this, Andrew. I always remember we in Seattle, we get a lot of like Native American like coaching. And um, I remember this guy, we were watching this like Cherokee poet and I always remember their language sounded so cool to me because it was like, Dude, I went on a field trip to Tillicum Village and Tillicum Village, you had to take a small little boat boat ride there and it was for a field trip and I had the best salmon roasted on cedar and that's that was like one of my favorite salmon dishes I ever had of all time and it was at a Native American museum Amen. all right guys all right everybody thank you so much for watching again let us know in the comments down below what you think uh does this information matter to you does it not is it interesting oh shout out to the muckle shoot yes and we are the Hot Pop Boys. Until next time, we out. Peace. Ooh, and last but not least, I cannot forget both undersized basketball players, but with a love for the game.